Ready? So I am uh, I am mostly self-taught. In fact, mostly also self-taught. Um, but beginning way back when I was knee high to a, I um, started learning all kinds of needlework, and that was my that was my go-to thing. So I I did embroidery, did beading. I did tailoring, I did, um, oh, skip that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I made clothes, I made, did upholstery, I did uh, quilting, I did everything. So that, that's my background. And uh, when I uh, retired, I went to the first, uh, the first quilt show that I'd been able to go to in about 10 years, because I, it had been 10 years since I touched anything, because I got very involved with work, which was not very rewarding, but it was, it was work. Um, and I went to a quilt show, and I, I was in shock, because when I stopped, all of the quilting was done by hand. And when I went back in 10 years, most of it was machine quilting. So I went home and I said, well, I have to teach myself that. <laughs> so this is my first piece starting, um, starting with all those new techniques that I had to learn. So I bought, I bought out the same quilt show, I bought these strips of fabric and put them together. But knowing me, I have to keep going and keep adding things to it. So I started out by quilting some of these motifs into the fabric, even though it wasn't being used, if the motif wasn't highlighted, I added some more in there. Then I thought, well, I'll have to use some strange uh, trims and ribbons and things like that. So I traced things through here. And then I just plain put ribbons in here. Uh, this, this one I kind of like because it's, it's kind of fluffy. And it floats in the breeze. And some of my other pieces since then I've done that with too. <coughs> and finally I have, these are not buttons. These are round pieces, round pieces of cloth that I circled with beads. And I call that tropical green. So that was my first effort. I kind of liked it. Now I'm going to go out of uh, out of order, just because the way these pieces are set up on the wall. So this piece here is called the conversation, and I went on. I I used plain fabric, and I drew on it uh, with, with uh, crayon, well not crayon, um, it was, it was uh, not really watercolor, but I could stretch it out and pull it out and all oh, it came, came through there. So that gives us a background. The only piece of uh, commercial product I used was this circle of the moon just because it looked like the moon. Then I used um, another another uh, neat fabric, which is, it's paper, but it looks, it handles like uh, cloth, and it, you can draw on it, you can do anything with it, so I made that the tree, and then the birds are both uh, Oil and metal that I use. And most of my work has whimsy, as you can see, and that's pretty whimsical, and so color and texture. And the texture is in the quilting and in anything else I can find to put on it. Explain to him about the uh, metal. 
how you came out uh, with that idea? Well, I might, or is it too that, soon? I, I might do that in another, okay. another piece. <laughs> Can I ask a question now? Yes. How do you fasten the metal to the fabric? Um, mostly I use, I can sew it. Really? Like uh, with, uh, as Carl was alluding to, I use a um, soda can, which you can cut out the top and the bottom, and then you have a very thin piece of metal that you can uh, put over an open flame, and it kind of patinas out however it comes out. Wow. And then it's thin enough to sew through, so. Interesting. This one is the crow's promise, and I generally have birds or trees or something in my stuff in my work. So um, somehow, or flowers. There's seem to be uh, something I, I go to. This one was kind of mystical. I used, um, again, uh, the stain or, it's not really, it's not really watercolor. It's it's stain that you... Tie Yeah. Uh, but I, I used to push it in all four directions so that I got, got it to turn out that way. And I used some stamps that I have, and I imprinted my words on here. And my bird has got embroidery. Using some of it is um, some of it's cloth, and some of some of it's actually metal. So that's the pros and cons. Again, using something different. It's actually a feather, a real feather in there, so. Cool. What kind of feather? Do you have any idea? No, just a little gift from the birds at uh, <laughs> my garden, say. They leave me a little presents. This one uh, came from a movie that uh, Carl and I went to see. It was called The Woman in Gold. And it was about um, so a Holocaust survivor whose uh, her whole family was destroyed in, in the Holocaust. Uh, she and her boyfriend had ran away, and they were, that was the only reason that they uh, survived. But uh, the family was a very wealthy family, and they had lots of uh, paintings in the family, and a lot of them, most of them, all of them, were taken by the Nazis, and they were currently, in, in today's time, in uh, Austria. And she was determined to get them back from Austria, and uh, it was very difficult. And she went to one lawyer, and another lawyer, and another lawyer, and it didn't work out. But she found this young man who was willing to put, a, put everything out and to uh, and he actually did win it back. So this is my uh, glimpse of Klimt, Klimt being the artist. Uh, I didn't try to um, create, recreate her face or anything, just, just the pose. So she was in uh, beautiful lame, and I used all golds in, in uh, the background. There were different kinds of uh, uh, upholstery fabric, and I just put a little bit of foil on these places to represent the gold. And I really, I really like it because it meant so much to me. I don't know if I'll ever sell it, but um, I, re I really, um, it really hit me. Mm -hmm. So that's a glimpse of Clint. That's a gorgeous piece. Mm -hmm. This one, you can't see, but let's push it up. You have to get really close to finding it, but this is all quilted in the background. It's a commercial fabric when I really went over it again with, with quilting. Um, this one is called 
um, Hope in Dark Days. And basically, uh, when I did it, the stock market was falling, everything was, everything was uh, falling out the bottom. And uh, I chose to think of the flowers as better days were coming. I put uh, beads to represent the dew drops on the leaves and the fabric flowers. And this is fabric. It looks like newspaper. I, I copied the newspaper onto uh, fabric and I use that. So it, it's a, seems like almost could be today, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I, well, flowers is a, a very big motif that I use and it works for this. Okay, so going going back to the cans, the soda cans, uh, this this is all soda cans. They were small small windows and large windows and I call this uh, Cosmic Insights. Um, the background made me think of uh, the stars in the sky, the, uh, the uh, galaxy, and I printed over it in uh, suns and moons and stars. You can barely see it, but it adds texture to to the piece. You just and turn it this way a little that bit. That way. And these are supposed to represent a comet's trail. And that's there. You can see that really if you you can look later and see that I really do. So right there on through here. And see and that's by hand or with your machine? By machine. With your yeah. machine. Yeah, I did I did I do most of it with machine. came really out of a piece of fair fabric that I found in uh, in a fabric store and it was sheer but it had all of these little diamond flecks in it and I took it home and I don't know I thought uh, it made it made me think of a star a sky a starry sky so I put a back a dark background on it and I put the moon on it which is just a plain old little circle of yellow and then it needed uh, it needed a background it needed to have depth it needed to have something going on so I put a cityscape there and this is just called moonrise because that's the focus of the piece of these and this one is called Vivi Eastfield and uh, it was directed at um, the Haute Couture uh, and I created this background and the background is all soda can. Cool. So the soda can, well it, from a distance you could almost look at it like a leather uh, or whatever you want but I Wild, wildly sewed on it, and then uh, this is just felt and a zipper. My theme with with the all three pieces that were in this photo were zippers. So the uh, one piece was uh, I think so. It was a full uh, a joke on Jimmy Choo. So they're shimmy shoes or something like that, <laughs> uh, and it was very high heels and uh, zipper, and the last one was uh, a poke purse zipper. And I think this is the last one we'll look at. I 
And this is really going back to my roots, really. Uh, it's uh, been painted. So it was all white fabric and I painted the, uh, the colors. And it's all heavily quilted, which you can see up close later. And then the branches of the tree are all different pieces of brown. And then of course we need little teeny pieces of green that I, that I stitched on to make the leaves. So I'm, I'm, I'm really great with little teeny tiny pieces that I cause myself agony with. <laughs> just, just like, um, just like the, uh, Blitz of Flint, I did the whole thing, but I, I didn't like uh, the red, it was, it was too bright. And so I stitched on all, every single one of those little tiny pieces of gold. <laughs> so, um, in conclusion, <laughs> uh, I just hope you, you like this and have as much fun with it as I do, and that you can look at the rest of the, um, the little funny things that I put in the corner and some of the other ones I haven't directed. Directed to, so. Yeah, you veered into 3D there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, then one last one. I could do that, yeah. Well, that's it. I didn't do it. <laughs> there you go. This one. This one was, a, a, again, a series of three. And uh, this one was, I was working on the pieces of the the vegetables that were in my garden and that I, I wanted different words for them in uh, um, in di if different languages. So I call this one pimento, uh, pepperoni, and then I created uh, the wooden um, table, I guess you would call it, with all different words on it. And this is the fabric background, and this is the window sill. And then behind the window, you have the mountains in the background and the cloth that blows in the breeze. And finally, I lost my mind, and uh, <laughs> and I went all around it with individually done beads that were in the colors of the spell piece. So that was that was my Zen moment. <laughs> I'd sit in front of the TV and go to to go to a, till I couldn't find any more spaces to put it. In. <laughs> that was it. Okay, that's really the end. I have a few questions. Oh, oh sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> first simple one, and the first piece. You have that thread that's out like this. Did you, un, you know, take a part thread to get that feathery look? Oh, these? No. They came out. Like just the way. It was just, it was actually a skein of wool. And, uh, oh, it came like that. Yeah, it was, it was really a pain in the neck to, to sew. But. <laughs> it's really interesting when you put it on because you can't really tell. It looks like magically glued on there. <laughs> yeah. um, now you said that in the one that one it kind of grew like mm -hmm. evolved as you worked on it but some of the others look more uh, planned out so how do you approach your work do you lay things out first most of the time that's hard to say I, I, I have an idea that's pretty well entrenched I, I will start to lay it out, but um, it, it changes and moves around. Oh, I thought that was going to look good, and now it looks terrible, and I'm going to move around. And, and, then, and then, of course, I'm going to add things to it, and I don't know what those will be until I get halfway finished, and that's the way it is. So it's just basically organic. Yeah. Okay. That's me. I'm organic. <laughs> So what's currently inspiring you and what are you working on now? I have been fooling around with uh, really, really just creating backgrounds. Um, I intend 
for now to put uh, exotic flowers on top of them, but I don't know how that's going to go. It's uh, it's it's all organic. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it goes. I have a, I have a question. Ah, that's Gabby. Gabby, what's your question? Um, I'm wondering, you know, you, you were, um, it, what you do, I think, is such a unique um, art medium. It's like what I do, there's so many people doing it and you have a lot of great people that are great teachers in YouTube and teaching it. Uh, you mentioned that most of it you learn on your own. Uh, do you consider doing a YouTube channel uh, teaching some of it? Because it's very intricate and it's, it's an art, but it also requires a skill like anything else, but it's a very unique uh, skill. And most people that do sewing that I know is do sewing for other purposes. Um, and I know that there are many artists using uh, this medium, but I don't know that world. So do you have a lot of people doing um, educational YouTube channels or do you consider doing something like that? It would be really great, I think, for many people. As far as YouTube channels, I I looked around. I don't see anything that's that's kind of what I like. What I like to do. I, I take to, I take different techniques and different uh, styles and sort of try to use it in my work. Um, I hadn't thought of doing a YouTube. Um, well, this will be on YouTube. Yeah, this will be on YouTube. <laughs> well, so you know, maybe to. maybe that would be something that would spring me off, so that I could use it. But. Um, that's a great idea. Yeah, your work is wonderful. It should be, you know, and your knowledge is, you know, and I can see that passion inside. Um, so it'd be wonderful if you could share it. Uh, and of course you share through your art, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that like you started experimental on your own and a lot of us do that. But if, if we have uh, some people that inspire and role models out there, uh, putting out their work. Um, and I know that is also a moment of vulnerability to do that, but I think it's really worth. Yeah, certainly. Thank you. Thank you. We can help you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Okay, so how about it? Show that I didn't show Thanks for coming, guys. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Barb. Thanks, Gabby. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>